Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on where you're tuning in from. It's so good to see all of your beautiful smiling faces again this fine Saturday, June 3rd. Unbelievable. Summer is almost here, so they say, although you wouldn't know it by looking outside. Uh, I'm I'm stoked for today, guys. I gotta be honest, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in the world. Revolutions in artificial intelligence, platform regulations changing, but also some good old proven fundamentals and principles, things that have stood the test of time and are just as relevant today as they have been for decades, centuries maybe. So we're gonna talk about all of that. Let me know what's going on, what your questions are, and let's see if... Um, it's going to sound super cheesy, but I was, I was going to say, let's see if we can make you some money. But it's funny, as I said it in my head, I was like, that sounds super, super corny. But that's kind of the goal. I mean, honestly, the goal of marketing is to, um, to spread your message, to help people, to serve, and, uh, and to obviously be rewarded fairly in return. David, Armpit of the South, good morning, my friend. Miami, good to see you here. <coughs> Coughing and hacking. That's almost why... Uh, you'll notice the notification for this live was a little bit late this morning. We've got a um, a kid who's a bit sick, and I was trying to figure out if I was going to be able to um, to get away. When you have four kids, one of them is always sick, so it's like a perpetual hospital at our house. Nothing nothing severe, fortunately, but colds and flus and all the usual jazz children bring into our lives. Uh, Kevin, good morning from Lakeland. Good morning, Kevin. So good to see you. Mel, great to see you. Loving that avatar. We've talked all things business jets, corporate aviation. If you got more questions, happy to chat. Um, fun fact, I don't know of those of you who caught the video that went live yesterday it was on my story and my um, exodus or retirement from aviation. What's fascinating, people always ask me, it's like, do you ever fly? Did you ever fly again? Et cetera, et cetera. No, literally the day that I stopped flying, I have not flown since. Full stop. I had a little bit of a desire to like take off and land and do some fun stuff in a plane, but like I have not flown a plane since. Could I still do it? Oh, I wouldn't want to be my passenger anymore. Carpal Diesel, Rob, good morning, my friend. Good to see you here. Thumbs up. You know it. Uh, good morning from Central Texas. Yes, am I correct in guessing that the change in thumbnails in some of your videos is split testing? You are 100% correct. 100%. Yes, anytime that you see a thumbnail swap out, it is because, one of two things. Number one, if it happens really quickly, it's because when I launch a video, the performance is not what I like to see in regards to click-through rate. So we'll measure the click-through rate. YouTube gives you a rating. It's like how well your video has done based on your last 10 videos compared to other videos. And uh, there's a lot of controversy around it because people come out and they're like, basically it's YouTube's way of saying, hey, this is a great video, make more like this. Or this is a trash video, never do this again. And sometimes YouTube's wrong. Uh, because the video may not be for the purpose of like clickbait and as many views as possible. It may be like the purpose of yesterday's video, which is uh, to share a story and provide useful information that's simply not going to do well on a grand scale. Uh, that said, still like to try to get in front of as many people as possible. So yes, everything is split tested. Uh, that was the first situation. The second situation is later I'll go back through old thumbnails or videos that where the retention is good. I was like, all right, it's a good video. It just doesn't have a good thumbnail to compel people to watch it. So we'll switch it up then. Dasha, happy Saturday to you. Still loving those colors. The blues, the purples. Very happy. Sedant, hey. Hey, right back at you. How's it going? Really well. Really well, my friend. How are you doing? How are you doing? John, what's up? What's up, John? Good to see you. Also, friendly reminder for those of you here and leaving comments, if you do want to do me one quick favor, hit the like button. Helps with the algorithm uh, and to boost it out to more people. Diana, it's been a while. Been a while. Yeah, been a bit MIA, I guess so, but good for you for taking action. That's even that's even better. If you, if you can't be here because you're busy working, all is forgiven. Uh, so, good morning. How are you? I'm so super well. Thank you. Very well. Been a bit uh, missing in action, trying to reach out to gyms. Good. I found one interested in running Facebook ads. They are looking for one to three clients only. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, my big question for them would be, hey, what's the lifetime value of one of your clients? Why only three? Why only one? Um, maybe they sell like $3,000, $5,000 packages. If so, that could be the thing. But um, yes, all good. Sounds easy enough. I see P2 down there. We'll hit that in a second. Jovial coach, my raccoon friend that is not a puppy. 
but a raccoon. I've not seen that raccoon since, by the way, when it took off across my yard. I don't know if I told you, the other day my kids were in the um, backyard and they're like, yeah, we saw a white, giant white dog, cat, or whatever, like run across the backyard. It was almost the size of our dog. Um, and I was like, that's weird. We don't have like giant cats around. We have cougars, but they're normally not in our backyard. And uh, terrifying. Anyway, the next morning, I went out to my office at like three in the morning. I wake up early. This was really early. And I'm walking to my office and I'm like going up the stairs and there's this like white creature sitting on my stairs. I was like, that's weird. I'm kind of moving, trying to see what it is. It's pitch black outside. Anyway, it was the cat. So he said, I, that's it. There's our story. Latricia, good morning from East Texas. You and Rob, Latricia, good to see you. Oh no, Rob's in Central Texas. I'm sorry. East Texas, good to see you. Uh, Sidant, what should I do if ad results slow down by a lot randomly? Uh, you're normal. That's what always kind of happens. Um, it's rare that a campaign will just keep on trucking forever without any changes in performance or views. So the solution is always the same and it's new copy and creative. So if you launch an ad and it doesn't do well, it could be any number of factors. If you launch an ad and it starts doing, and it does decent, really well, and then it starts to just not do well, yeah, it's probably just need to change things up. Like what ends up happening is that if you can imagine a tree and there's all the like low hanging fruit at the bottom, well, when you launch an ad campaign, Facebook goes and like picks off all the low hanging fruit. So it's like, that's an easy sell. That's an easy sell. That's a good lead. We'll take all that. But then you run out of those. Uh, and how quickly you run out depends on your offer and your market, and your messaging, and blah, blah, blah. But you'll get further up the tree. It'll get more expensive, more competitive. So you'll have to um, spice it up, change it up. Wedding picks, BD, good night. Good night, wedding picks. I don't know if you're just coming in to say say goodnight, in which case, sleep, sweet dreams. You can always catch the replay. Uh, Diana, okay, P2, part two of the question. They are high ticket, assumed if they only want one to three clients. So the owner is really stressed. The need for qualified leads over volume. Any recommendations for the ad copy or creative to accomplish this? Uh, so two things. Number one, let's start with the ad copy and creative. You just have to make sure that it is relevant and resonating with a higher ticket price point. So you're gonna have a very different market. Like if we're, if we're creating ads for a $5,000 a month premier gym membership subscription versus a $50 a month drop in whenever you can, like the $50 a month one's gonna be like, here's a gym, it's 50 bucks, get in shape, lose weight, feel great, whatever it is. Like we can spice it up more than that. But like the 5K a month, we really have to sell like the benefits of it. So like, why have they failed before? Why is this one better? What's the point of differentiation? What makes it so special? We're really gonna have to beat that one up. Also, everybody wants qualified leads over volume. Um, do you know how we get qualified leads? Often through volume. So again, this is use high level. Um, if you want, and you don't wanna like flood them with crappy leads, you can run them through yourself first or through like a virtual assistant or through someone on their team and they can filter and process them and auto select and only put through the best ones. But like, you're gonna get qualified leads, you're gonna get volume. Uh, and if you're selling high ticket, you're gonna get a lot of ones that are just literally not even close to what you need and um, that's it. But again, that doesn't really bother me. Well, what I'm after is what is my CPL, my cost per lead, and then what is my CPA, my cost per acquisition. So you might spend a bit more for leads, you might spend a heck of a lot more for cost per acquisition, but as long as you're returning like a three to five time ROI on your spend, you're in happy town. Mohid, hey, I own a website that provides format conversion services. Can you tell me what is the best way to get traffic with minimum resources? And can you give me any advice also? I don't know what format conversion services are. For what? For pictures, for video, for whatever? So um, not that I think it'll change the answer too much, but I'm, I'm not totally, totally following you. What's the best way to get traffic with minimum resources? Well, if you can't spend money, like if we've got minimum resources, then you're gonna have to do old school, boots on the ground, grassroots, guerrilla style marketing. Probably a lot of outreach, probably a lot of emails, a lot of content marketing, all of the things, all of the things. Like you can spend time or you can spend money. If we don't have money, we spend time. Uh, okay, Christian Oliveros. Hey, what would be the most effective investment money time platform for an ad campaign for a small language teaching business that is starting up in order to attract people to my landing page? Oh, most effective investment. Well, you're asking like time and money are two, like I just said, basically time and money are two different things there of you can spend time or you can spend money. So there's no clear cut answer, 
because you're going to need to do a little bit of due diligence and research into where people are finding these kind of services in the first place and like what they're even looking for. Then you can decide, are they searching for things? In which case I might run a Google ads campaign and see what my cost per click and my cost per acquisition is. Um, if like time is short and I need sales immediately, I am going to be, I don't want to call it gambling, but we're going to be testing with Google ads in order to try to get people through. Now, if money's tight and I've got a little bit more time, I'm content marketing, I'm social media marketing, content marketing on social media, two sides of the same coin. Um, I'm making offers, all, all of those things. So for example, my channel now, my, my funnel, if you want to call it, even though the business model is dramatically different than it ever has been, um, I am running for my own personal business at this very moment, zero ads, zero ads. I'm, I'll run them again. I like them. I think they're fun. I do it mostly for fun to see, play around with things. But like right now, zero ads, which means that my entire funnel concept customer journey is someone will engage with content through one of the social media platforms, predominantly YouTube. They'll go down to the description. They'll click a link. They'll join the email list. They'll get emails. They'll decide if they want to sign up for a course or whatever it is. Like that is my entire funnel. So it works and it works incredibly well. I don't know what we're getting right now. hundred leads a day, um, which in the internet marketing world would be like say five bucks a lead. So it's the equivalent of having to spend $500 a day on ads that we get for quote unquote free, even though the cost of, of running a channel like this is um, uh, astronomical compared to, uh, compared to what it was. It used to be very inexpensive. Now we have amazing editors and team and everyone like that. So it's a commitment. Lando, morning Adam, don't forget everyone hit that thumbs up. You know it, brother, thank you. Yeah, we'll get that going. Actually, let's hit that water break, water sip. Oh, refreshing. So good. Okay, Devang. Hey, Adam, what's your opinion on budget based on strategy versus strategy based on budget? In the marketing realm, I tweeted the same, but no wise man replied. Did you tweet at me? Actually, I'm pretty bad at checking Twitter anyways. Um, fun fact, if you don't ask in the Discord, which, hang on, where's my, uh, I'm going to write that one out, modernmarketinghub.com. Put it on the screen here. There we go, right over my face, right over both our faces. Um, you can ask in there and you might get an answer. You could also tweet at Adam Earhart and um, I log into Twitter once every few days and I might be able to answer it there. So those are other places to get. But opinion on budget based on strategy, strategy based on budget. I like to budget based on strategy, ideally. And the reason is, is because money is a tool that we can use to accomplish the goals of the strategy, but this is gonna be a very fancy answer, so I'm glad we're doing this video because I don't think I'd be able to type it all out. But here's the deal. Let's say we've got a business, easy math here. We can move these numbers around, add zeros, take away zeros, whatever we're doing. We got a business that's doing a million dollars a year, $1 million, and we wanna grow it to $2 million. Okay, so we've determined that our funnel is we go from an ad or content marketing or whatever, we take them to a landing page, we get them on an email list, we do um, seven part warm up series, we put them on a call, we sell them this, da 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 da. I need all of that mapped out. Then I need metrics assigned to each one, even rough. Like if you're just getting started here, you may not know what all these are yet. That's fine, just build it and start measuring things. Then you'll know. Then I'm gonna look for areas that are weak. So I've got a chain. I want to find the weak links in the chain. So maybe people are visiting my landing page, but they're not converting. Okay, now I need to put more time or money or energy into the landing page to boost that up. Maybe I'm getting people on a sales call, but no one's converting or I'm converting like 10%. Okay, well now I need to increase the quality of my sales calls. I need to get better salespeople. I need to possibly warm them up more. Like, am I sending reminder emails? Am I giving them homework? Do I have a vetted application process? All of these things. So my strategy will then dictate how much I'm going to spend. Because if I can figure out that, let's say lifetime value of a customer is $10,000, and I'm able to acquire customers on channel A for $500, and channel B for $1,000, and channel C for $20, I'm gonna take my budget and I'm gonna put it in there, and I'm going to spend as much as I possibly can, hear me out, because if I'm able to put in a dollar and get out two, why would I not play that game, right? Now where things get dangerous is if I put in a dollar and I'm getting out, I don't know. That's where things are sketchy. Put in a dollar, get out, not sure. Put in a dollar, get out, I don't know. Put in a dollar, get out, 50 cents. Like that, that's terrible, which is why we have to measure and manage everything from it. Um, the downside of like doing a budget is that 
normally when people are like, I have 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or 50,000 bucks or whatever it is, they don't really have metrics assigned to it. So it's kind of gambling. We're just taking money and spending it and we don't know why we're spending it and we're using it up just because I got a hundred thousand dollar budget. What should I do? I don't know. Maybe we need $500. Maybe we need 10 million. What do you, are you trying to do SEO ranking for credit cards? Um, I hope that made sense. All good. Ruben, good morning, Ruben. Good to see you here. Lakia, hey, good to see you. Love the new video from yesterday. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, it was slightly um, a different, whoops, hang on, I'm shrinking you, moving you all over. Uh, yes, a slightly different departure from the usual stuff, but a fun one to do and launch and, um, and something I don't get to talk enough about. Jesus, hello from Peru. Buenos dias, Jesus. Uh, Byron, good morning, my friend. Good to see you here. Hey, Jerry from New York. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, it's been a while. Finally able to get on for a live session. Well, it's awesome to see you here. I've missed you. I've missed you. All right, Mel, let's hit it. What should we look for when hiring marketing help, a marketing agency? There are so many out there. There's so many, so many. Uh, what are the best ways to filter out the bad ones and find a reputable source? Okay. Excellent question. What are the best ways? Uh, number one is if you can get a referral from other people in your industry, if not other people in other industries that have used an agency before and have good recommendations for it, that's almost always the best plan. It just is. It's almost impossible to sort through um, all the different agencies and, and know or whatever it is. Like it's, again, there's so many and you got to kiss a lot of frogs sometimes before you find that magical princess or prince or whoever. Um, uh, next option. My preference is to go for people-based agencies or like persona individual people over big, massive brand name agencies. Uh, so in other words, I don't run ads anymore, so I'm happy to talk about this, but it's like I would have rather hired Adam Earhart, the person, to run my ads than Adam Earhart's agency. Because the way that agencies work is you'll have the owner at the top, he's going to hire marketing directors or she's going to hire marketing directors and all that under them. They're going to hire junior people and da, 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 da. And depending on your budget and how much you're spending, like you're getting the junior, junior people. So you get to pay premium rates for sub premium service. It's an amazing deal. Um, and the only people that really get rich are the agency owners. Now, I've, the agency that I ran, we didn't structure it that way, but we were an anomaly. And it's literally just because I was a huge marketing geek and I just liked to touch all the campaigns and do all my magic on them. Um, that said, the best results I ever got was when I was personally responsible because I put my name on it. So someone knew when they hired me, they were paying a premium for sure, but that's because they could get access to me and I was responsible and it was my name and my reputation. So I like finding those people that like put their stamp of approval on it. Um, after that, you can run mini tests, contracts, uh, like any marketing agency that's like, you have to sign a one year non, um, compete exclusivity with us, prepay everything. That's a bit sketch. I understand the importance of understanding that marketing takes time and we've got to give them a couple months to like prove themselves. But if they're not getting good results right away, I don't like it. Uh, the way that I always ran my agency and my personal stuff was always month to month. I don't know if I would advise, like if I was telling someone to start a marketing agency, I probably wouldn't tell them to do that. I'd be like, hey, try to get the client to do three months because you're going to need time to do it. But from like a buyer's perspective, I would try to find agencies that did like, look, we're so good that you're, once you work with us, you're never going to leave, which is what ended up happening. I've had clients that still, we don't talk about it because it's not available, but like they're still running, uh, we're still running ads for them and all that through the agency. And they've been with us for like five years. So do a good job. People stay. Uh, Kimora, hello. I'm running ads on Google to my Etsy listing. I'm getting clicks, but not converting any sales. Any advice? Uh, two pieces. Number one, check out which keywords you're getting clicks for. Are they relevant? Are they showing buying intent? Um, is it like buy this thing now? Or is it like learn more about this random thing? Uh, the second thing is really take a look at your Etsy listing. This same thing applies for Amazon listings or Shopify listings. And, um, and what's missing? from your page and your stuff versus other top sellers in your market? Do you need video, um, videos of your product? Do you need more testimonials? Do you need more ratings and reviews? Do you need more whatever, uh, social proof to show it? It's like, if we're, if we're not converting, then it's typically both, but it's like, I'd focus on the, um, sales page there. Also, 
I would make sure that I had enough data to make a decision for it. So have you got 10 clicks or a thousand clicks? Because if you've got 10 clicks and you're not converting, we just don't have enough data. I, like, we'll never know. We need, we need a good couple hundred clicks before I can be like, oh, here's the problem. Because otherwise it's, it's called uh, statistically insignificant data. And in fact, if you want to go to Google, you can type in statistical significance calculator and it will show you uh, something. Oh man, testing my knowledge here again. But I think it's called p-value, which is the statistical significance of a thing. So if you've got like seven clicks and no sales, it's going to tell you, we have no idea. If you got a thousand clicks, two sales, it'll be like, all right, this is statistically accurate. Um, this is just not working. Like Johnny and June, good morning, Adam Helicopter Pilot here in Alabama. Right on, my man. Helicopters, I love them. I think they're great. Um, my wife is terrified of them, as are many people that I know. They, I'll be honest, I love them, but they also scare me a tiny bit. So I don't blame you for not flying again. I probably won't after retirement either. Yeah, I don't know. Like once you do it professionally, right? You kind of get it all out of your system. Uh, it's a neat thing to do, but I don't know. What's also interesting is that like different personalities in that gravitate to different fields. I was never like the live, die pilot person. Like, you know, pilots, it, um, you ask what they do and they're like, I'm a pilot. And then they never stop talking about planes. I wasn't that guy. Sue, a first time listener from Sholo, Arizona. Hello, Sue. First time listener, first time comment, first time commenting. That's amazing. We're, um, what do you call that? Charting new paths here today. EF, good morning, Adam. Are you staying healthy? I am staying super healthy so far. Knock on wood. I'm hydrating, vitamin Cing, all of the things. If there is a medicine, a vaccination, a whatever, I'm taking it all. Keep me, keep me good. Got to keep rocking and rolling here. Diana, P3. What campaign structure, budget per ad set, and follow-up sequence do you recommend? Should I create a thank you landing page or link directly to the calendar so that customers book the call themselves? Um, I would run them to a thank you landing page where customers can book the call themselves because then I can pixel them and give them the next option. My funnel, I always want someone to be taking the next step. I never want to get to an end of a process where I'm like, all right, y'all done now. That's it. See you later. Like if they want more, I want to be able to give them more. It's not fair to them to cut them off. And uh, they're like, I still need more help. I'm like, no, no, you got to wait for the emails. Wait for the funnel. Might be there in a week. Uh, that's bad business. It's not helpful. Uh, what campaign structure budget per ad set? I'm not sure. I think I talked about this in my latest Facebook ads video. Um, we can talk about it real quick here because it's pretty much, it's almost always the same. So it's like campaign structure, campaign. Um, with one campaign, then different ad sets. Still my preferred way to do it. Then in my ad sets, I have generally been keeping like very open targeting, all placements, kind of letting it do its thing. Budget per ad set, depending on my cost per lead and cost per acquisition, if you're doing like high ticket stuff, you're gonna need higher costs or higher budgets to obviously compensate for that. But I'd be spending minimum, say 25 bucks a day per ad set. Um, with the intention of getting five leads at five bucks a day, because I need to make sure there's sufficient data going through for Facebook to optimize accordingly. Whew, we're on it. I feel like we've answered a lot of questions already. I think we're on a roll here today. Might be a record. 8.24 a.m. We're not even at the halfway point. This is good. Oh, also a friendly reminder. I was supposed to do this right away. Sometimes I forget. Uh, Academy stuff. Updates coming. Hop in now. Price will be going up uh, in the not so far future. A couple things that I wanted to point out that I don't often talk about, and then I keep getting these emails um, from people asking about it. So I want to, we'll talk about it now real quick. We'll get back to the questions. The benefit of the, um, of the course, aside from the structure and the campaign and all that, predominantly, I'm going to say the three bonus courses that are in there two in particular are going to be the most helpful. One is on the modern marketing plan, which is going to help you map out that actual full campaign. I keep getting questions about it and they're good questions and they're important, but everything is answered in there. So it's going to walk you through the model market message media machine in explicit detail, how to choose the right offer, how pricing considerations, uh, how to develop an ideal customer avatar, all of those things. The next one is the perfect email script. I've said this before, I'll say it again, when I'm looking at a business, uh, any new business, and I wanna make them fast money, there's two things I do. Number one is I look over their last 12 months, I find their two highest months, we drill down into those, I say, what were you doing? What were you doing preceding those events? Always there was something, and I say, we're doing that again, and then I make them a lot more money. 
It's super simple, unbelievably simple, always works. Number two, I install an email marketing campaign or take their email marketing and I make it better. And I do it using the perfect email script, which is more than just a script. It'll walk through the psychology and the sequence and all of the things that you need to do. Um, that's it. So any more questions on there? I'm going to send you back to that because it's important, incredibly important. Okay, rare contents. I'm planning to pursue my MBA in USA. I'm from India. I wanted to ask how USA MBA is different from other countries' MBA. I don't know. I have no idea. I've never, I don't have an MBA. I have no intention of doing an MBA. I almost did an MBA. Um, but I can tell you, I definitely do not know about other countries' MBAs. So that is that. Uh, if you asked me if I thought an MBA was worth it, that would be another discussion altogether. We can talk about that later, maybe. Uh, Mr. Ryder, hi, people. Hi, Mr. Ryder. How do you think Google searches will change? How do I think they will change? I think there's going to be a slow and steady evolution like there has always been. I don't think we're going to see one day we log into Google and it's completely <laughs> different. But it continues to change. And the way that it changes is twofold. Number one of which is that consumer behavior does influence the algorithm and what gets shown. Uh, number two is that the way that they prioritize, hang on one sec, can I mute? I got a cough. More of a clearing throat. Um, the way that they continue to update the algorithm to help try to include the most valuable, relevant information, um, they, they do this through algorithm changes like penguin and panda and hummingbird and all these nerdy animal things. But I don't think it's going to be too significant. So yeah, that's it. Mohid, one more thing. What should be the best interest and behavior for a website that convert PDF images, videos, and audios into different format? Which audience give the best conversation? Okay, I think I follow you. So what would be the best interest and behavior for a website that converts? Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I'm going to rephrase your question so I think I can help you as well as other people listening. Essentially, we have a service that does stuff, okay? For lack of a better term, we do stuff. Who could benefit from this stuff? Well, that's up to you. Because right now, a lot of people. I can think of business people. I can think of entrepreneurs. I can think of people in this market and that market. So it's really up to you to figure out who you want to serve, who you're best able to serve, and then use that to form your messaging around and use that to form your targeting around. Like right now, you're basically asking me, I have a toothbrush. Who's the best market for people to sell a toothbrush to? And the answer is people with teeth. But that's 8 billion people minus, I don't know, a billion that have unfortunately lost their teeth. So it's like, that's too much. We need, we need specificity. We've got to be like, well, why is this toothbrush different? Why is this toothbrush better? Who did this toothbrush appeal to most? What makes it unique or novel or whatever it is? So we have more research to do, my friend. EF or F. EF. We'll go with that. Figuring out which items to select as a new affiliate and would like to start making money immediately. It's a common sentiment. Fair enough. Is affiliate marketing the way to go? And should I start with a website or YouTube channel? Ah, good question. So affiliate marketing is one of the hardest businesses to get into and make good money doing. Um, typically, the people that make the most affiliate marketing are the people that have the biggest audiences, unless they're like just master marketers. For the record, the first year that I made over six figures with affiliate marketing was like, forever into my career, forever, because um, I didn't have an audience. So if I suggested a product to like my mom, she'd be like, I don't need it. Like, ah, oh, there goes my other sale. Come on, mom, buy the random thing. So it's like, we, we need people to do affiliate marketing for. And when you do affiliate marketing, your competition is affiliate marketers. Your competition, I like to think of collaboration more than competition, but affiliate's quite different. It's, it's really you either buy from that person or that person. Your competition in many of these cases are people like me, like really geeky marketing people that just love and eat this stuff up. So you've got a, you've got a slog ahead of you. It, can't, it can be done. It's being done all the time, but it can be done. Um, website or YouTube channel? YouTube channel, for sure. Um, you need a website too, but like definitely a YouTube channel. It's not quick. And you've got to decide on what you're going to do affiliate marketing for, and you're going to have to do a lot of research into what you're going to be able to create videos on that people are actually going to watch and provide value and lead to affiliate. Uh, that said, is it worth it? Yeah, 
Maybe not from the money you'll make in the first year, because I don't know if you'll make very much at all. But by the end of that first year, if you put out like 50 to 100 videos, one to two videos a week, you're going to be a significantly better marketer. You're going to understand things about marketing and consumer behavior and all of that that um, other people could only ever dream of. In fact, this is the reason that I believe YouTube is probably the single best place to really cut your teeth in marketing. Like if you really want to get good at marketing, start a YouTube channel. And the reason is, is because it encompasses all of the elements of marketing. It encompasses obviously thumbnail design, which is graphics and hooks. It encompasses psychology and storytelling, presentation and communication, um, structure and copywriting with your headlines. Like it just has all of the things. Uh, is it easy? No, of course not. But like, it's worth it. B Zoot, hey B, love from Trinidad and Tobago. Good to see you. I'm starting a personal brand. I was wondering if I should create a separate page just for business or start to post on my personal, which just has personal pics. Good question. If you're like a personal brand is easier to market than a business brand because people like doing business with people, not with businesses. So personal is easier. Um, I would post probably on your personal one, but I would start transitioning the focus away from personal pics and more towards business slash personal pics. So could you post a personal pic, but tie it into the business? Could you do something on the weekend and tie it in? I don't know, like go for brunch and you're at brunch and you're like, hey, I'm at this new brunch and they have this amazing honey and uh, that ties in with our business or whatever it is. It's like there's, we can, we can tie things in um, as well as give people a bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes. Blacked Out Inc. Hey Adam, thank you for your awesome videos. Thank you for your awesome comment, my friend. I appreciate it. Latricia, I joined Discord but can't find ours. Okay, hang on. Where's ours? Da -da -da -da. It is right here. Modernmarketinghub.com. That should take you right away over to Discord. And then you should be able to hop in there right away. Sedant, I see. Thanks so much. Made a small mistake on that. I duplicated the ad campaign and ran it again. Shouldn't have done that. Okay. Yes. All good. No, we'll, we'll get you all sorted out. Elon, good to see you, my friend. I wanted to ask about ads themselves. I'm planning on doing UGC for those not familiar. That is user generated content like problem over product is the solution. But you also say that I should make it irresistible and provide value. How can I do that? Okay. Hang on one sec. Let me reread that. You wanted to talk about ads. You're planning on doing user-generated content. Well, if you're doing UGC, you're going to have less control. So user-generated content is basically when your market is going to make your ads and you're going to, or content, and you're going to share it. So I think we, we might have the wrong term there on your, on your part there. It's like, we are probably creating an actual ad and we'll do UGC for like, um, content marketing stuff later. So you want to focus on the problem over the product. Perfect. Let's still use those no tie shoelaces. I think if, I'm not sure if that's still the one, but we're going to run with that one. So yes, we have two different options of selling a shoelace that does not require tying, tying. One is we show the product and we're like, here's a product of shoelaces you don't tie, which I think you should do anyway. The second is being like, hey, do you have kids that are always tripping over their shoes and they're the pain and it's a health hazard? That's why we have no tie shoelaces. So again, in copywriting, we would call this PAS, problem, agitate, solve. What's the problem? Kids are always tripping. What's the agitation? Well, then when they trip, they cut themselves and they break things and it's a mess. What's the solution? These no tie shoelaces that just fix it automatically. So that's it. Now, how do you make the offer irresistible? Well, it's going to come down to, again, pick up that book. Um, Alex Hormozzi did a really good job of like structuring everything. It's a hundred million dollar offers. I think it's 99 cents for Kindle on Amazon, but he's going to go over all of the things. It's, it's very grounded, um, offer structure that he's done a very good job of making clear. If you want a slightly more complicated one, you could look up Robert Bly's work, but it's, um, it's significantly more heady and intellectual. So I like Alex's nice, easy graphs, but like, we're going to talk about scarcity or urgency, limited time only, and this and this, and how do we make it impossible for them to fail? And how do we limit work on their part and, and, uh, eliminate sacrifice they have to make. So all of those things, as far as providing value, there's only so much you're going to be able to do in an ad. Uh, especially with a product. So I don't think you're going to be giving them tons of value in the ad. And I think that's okay in this regard. Mel, do you recommend email marketing for high dollar items? People don't purchase often real estate cars, private aviation with the minimum one time per week email still apply in these cases. So yeah, I, I recommend email for everything I've yet to see in my 
many, many years of doing this, a single industry that does not benefit from email marketing. Now, with high dollar items, you're going to have to basically become like more of a media company than you are like an email marketer. So high dollar real estate, good example. Think of, in fact, actually best example, when you fly on a private jet, this is going to sound super bougie. I was the pilot, not the passenger. I got to be the passenger a few times, but not, not my thing. I rarely never fly private anymore. So however, when you're in the back of a business jet, you'll find magazines like Rob's Report and Yacht Buyers and all of these like super expensive magazines. You want to get a couple of those. You'll find them in the FBOs as well, like the, the mini airport terminals for private planes. There we go. What's an FBO even stand for? Fixed pace operation? Let's go with that. You'll find all those magazines as well. You want to take those and read them and, um, and create stuff like that. So what's interesting about this? How, how is this providing value? Why would someone want to read this over something else? Again, it really comes down to kind of like basic market research and understanding how you're going to provide value and be interesting to the people that you want to serve. Um, I'm no billionaire, but I'm well off. And I can tell you that the only emails that I read and subscribe to are ones that I find very interesting and fascinating in areas that I like. So maybe you become like a mini Rob's report email. Here's what's going on in the world of business and aviation. Here's how to get the, net, the best deal on your business jet. Here's how to da, 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 da. Here's the top, whatever. Objects. Can you give a get started advice for new SaaS product marketing? Yeah, tough, tough. Um, if you've got a new SaaS thing and you're doing it, on your own without like venture capital or anything like that, you probably have to start doing some kind of giveaway influencer, micro influencer marketing, nano influencer marketing, find people with small dedicated followings that would be interested to the niche or target market that you're going after and see if you can get them to review it either for, for money or for free or whatever you need to give them um, and start creating a lot of content around your product and why it's good. That's going to be the best plan. You could try and like run ads for app installs, but I don't know if I'd do that one yet because often you can end up with some pretty hurting uh, rankings and ratings if it's not fully fleshed out. Okay, we're good. We're rocking. So, he do all. Hey, how are you? Very well, my friend. Very well. Thank you. First, thank you so much because I have got inspired by you to start my agency. Good for you. And I got my first meeting tonight. That is three weeks after starting my agency. Oh, man. Good for you. That's amazing. That's a celebration time. Clients, car dealer, do you have any suggestions for me about car dealer niche, like how to get more clients, how to price, how to get the best results for them through Facebook ads? Yeah, I've done a number. I had a number of car dealer clients for years. Um, what was the best thing? If they're local, then one of the best things you can do is certainly for the early stages is like go in there and like create the content for them. So get videos of cars, get this thing, get that thing, other pictures, um, post all kinds of stuff. Like with a car dealer, you're normally dealing with a smaller local market. So your job is like content saturation. So you want to highlight people that have bought a car. You want to get pictures of the people with their new car. You want to talk about new developments that are coming into the lot. You basically want to create a whole bunch of stuff for them and then make sure that it's posted regularly, which will be your job. Now, pricing. Depends. What's the market? What's the, uh, like, are we talking which, uh, like, normally the country dictates. So where are you living? And that's going to have a big factor of it. Um, and then also you can, um, work around with them for a little bit. Like you don't have to give them one price. You can give them packages. So I'm going to use easy math here. This might be way out, but it's like, you could be like, here's my $500 package. Here's my $1,000 package. And here's my $1,500 package. Um, which one do you think would be the most useful to you? And then you can just put things in accordingly. Uh, getting that first client though is probably more important than making the million dollars right away because we need the referrals and the testimonials. We need to get results. We need to get that first client so that we have proof so we can get another. Uh, Diana, he mentioned their services start at $400 packages. Okay, so in the world of, um, I guess that's kind of high ticket. That's not that crazy. That's weird that he only wants like two or three more clients though because that's like an extra of $800 to $1,200. Still, no judgment here. But um, I guess a little judgment. Judgment is not the right word. It's, it freaks me out a little bit. It's like if they only want to grow their business by like that little amount, it makes me nervous for you as the marketer because 
How much are you going to be able to charge and make and why do they only want that? We could start there and then we could educate them of like, imagine how much better things would be if we added two more people. I don't know, I think people think far too small most of the time. Um, not crazy, but like just, just far too small. So anyway, all of my initial advice still applies. We'll just, uh, we'll hack off a zero. Hannah, Godspeed Adam, let's help his algorithm with a thumbs up. Oh, thank you, Hannah. You're my thumbs up purveyor, you and Lando. Always, always with the, the kind words. Yeah, let's, let's do that quick and we'll go. <clears throat> hey, oh, Elon. Nothing weird, but the microphone sounds weird today. Do you know why? I just realized it. Hang on, look at this. How's that sound? That's gonna sound a million times better. I had the wrong microphone selected. So one of the fun things about making as many videos as I do is I have in front of me three microphones, four, four microphones in front of me. I've got a Deity D3 Pro, a Rode NTG5, a Shure SMB7, and then my um, Mac one. And actually, one more if you consider the AirPods, which occasionally click in. And my computer, and by my computer I mean me, occasionally forgets to click the right, um, the right one. So this is going to sound so much better. Good for y'all for sticking around up till now with crappy audio. Smoke and baits. How should I go about expanding my soft plastic company to more local shops? Should I ask the one I am in now what I help the most with and then pitch that to other stores? Yep, totally. I'll be like, hey, quick question for you. Can I buy a lunch, buy a coffee? Love to, like, what do you like about this? What do you think I could do to make it better? Um, what do you think other people need? What do you think I could go to them with? Like assuming you and I never did business before and I just came in one day with some stuff, like what would I need to tell you to actually get you to pay attention rather than just throwing me out? Um, all of those are good. Like, yeah, you need to have those conversations all the time. Totally, totally. But yes, amazing. Yeah, what, you, what you've got to do, like most businesses, and this is an evolution, by the way, it's like we never get it fully dialed in because the second we do, our goals change, our market changes, we expand. So it's this constant iterative process to refine the message and the value of our offer to our target market. And it's going to change, but that's okay. Does, we still have to do it. So yes, I want to know exactly what is it that I do that you like, that you find valuable? What is my unique point of differentiation? Why me over someone else? What is it about the, the lures, the bait, whatever it is? Um, what could I do to make it even better? You don't have to take all of their advice either. Some of their ideas is going to be terrible. That's fine. We write it down. We say, oh, okay, interesting. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, about that. We don't argue with them. If they're like, you should give all your stuff away for free. I'm like, okay, interesting. Um, maybe that's a crazy one. If they said something like that, I'd be like, cool. And like, assuming that it costs me money because it does, um, like, is price the factor? Is that the biggest thing that you're after? Or is it the packaging or the presentation or knowing how quickly it's going to sell to customers? And what else could I do? Do you need it delivered better? Do you need a better display? Do you need an end cap? It's like all of these things we can start to factor in. Healing Waters International Business. This is really good. Oh, that's good to hear. We'll keep going. Son of Mansa, knowledge is power. Respect to this channel. Yeah, knowledge is power. It really is. A applied knowledge. Knowledge combined with action. I don't know if there's anything better. I, man, I love learning. I just really, really like learning. I've got so many random books that I want to read and things like that. I think curiosity is the key. Just try and stay curious. That'll keep you open to new ideas and insights. Question, what is the best website to get photos when trying to do an ad? Uh, it you know, I, I answer this a lot. It depends. And it depends on budget and style of image that you want. So my preference normally is a paid photo service like shutterstock.com, iStock photo, somewhere that costs somewhere between like 10 and $30 a photo. I like those because I can find almost always exactly what I want. It's royalty free. So you pay it. You get, you got to make sure you buy the right commercial version of it. Um, but if you want the free version or the free version of photos, you still need royalty free because you can't just take an image and then go use it because uh, that's illegal. That's copyright. You will get shut down and possibly sued. So we don't do that. But there's other sites like Pixabay and Unsplash is probably my favorite, even though Unsplash has started to introduce a paid option as well. So that's fascinating. But yeah, I like those. So check out Shutterstock.com for paid. Check out Unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H.com for free. Shazara, building my site to shift clients from Upwork. 
Good plan. Sell services directly. Tracking pixel integrations like Facebook Pixel. Advice on landing page and website structure. Each client is about $500. Um, so hang on. Let me see if I understand what you do. So you sell services, tracking pixel integrations. like So you're basically selling like Facebook ad setup services or something. Regardless, it sounds like a marketing agency service. So yeah, as far as landing page or website structure, my advice is to probably pick a half decent template um, from anywhere. Honestly, like Elements, um, Envato, um, any ClickFunnels or lead pages, marketing agency, any kind of website theme through ThemeForest, like all of those are going to have marketing agency templates. And then you can find one and just customize it from there. That's really it. The big thing for you is going to be social proof, testimonials, all the usual. Segar Carmacker, good morning, my friend. Good to see you. Mel, do you recommend high level for all industries, sales consulting, or is it best for marketing agencies? I recommend it for pretty much all agencies. I've yet to hang on. Where's my Where's my link? Um, like if someone ever comes to me with an, I, sorry, let me clarify that. I don't necessarily love it for e-com. So for e-commerce product sales. I don't like it as much. And the reason is, is because I prefer going direct with like Shopify or something like that. That said, I don't do a lot of e-com. Um, personally, I do none. Consulting once in a while, I'll look at it if it's a product that I think is just amazing and I don't know why it's not selling as well as it should and the company reaches out, then maybe I will. Maybe, maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Um, but otherwise, yeah, high level. Like for any services-based business, high level. Products, no. Services, all services, yeah, definitely. Um, with you, Mel, the real benefit of it is almost going to be in the pipeline and the tracking of it. So I like the SMS functionality and capabilities and the email and the funnels and the, all the this stuff. I'd almost use it for no other reason than building my pipeline of like, new lead comes in, transfer them over here, tracking all of them, making sure that I'm staying up to date and following up with them accordingly. Um, that alone will be worth the price of admission. There's, I think through this one, you get a free 30 day trial and all kinds of other free stuff, courses and calls and et cetera. Um, the intro program is like 99 bucks a month. They might have a, I can't remember. I'm on the, whatever the best one is, but it's like, I think for 300 a month, you'll get even more functionality. Considering the cost or the value of your client, it's probably worth it for that one. But take a look, talk to the team. They will tell you. Adam, if you can hop into Discord every once in a while, that'd be great. Yes, it would be great. I'm going to have to work on that right now. Um, so here's, let's have a quick mindset chat. I think with everybody, it's an important one. What ends up happening? When you first get started in business, everything looks like a really good opportunity and you take everything that you possibly can. As you get more successful, um, you get more opportunities that come across your plate and you have to start saying no to good ones in order to say no, uh, yes to great ones. But then you have to start saying no to great ones to say yes to amazing ones. And then you have to start saying no to basically everything. So at the point in my career now, it's, it's time is, is very tricky. So I think there's huge value. I want to get involved in discord and things like that, but I've got to measure it very carefully. So I'll like hop in really quick, do a sniper attack, answer questions if I can make a comment, but then I got to get out. Um, which is why this live is so valuable. The real value of Discord is, I think, in the community and how allowing other people, all of y'all here, to continue the conversation, to ask questions, to get answers and things like that. Okay, Craig. Hey, Adam, do you think chat GPT will have an effect on SEO? What effect might that be? I'm not sure if you asked this last week, Craig, or if someone else did, but it seems to be a, a common question. Um, <clears throat> it's definitely going to have an impact on SEO. And the reason is, is because it makes it unbelievably easy to generate mass amounts of content like that. So yeah, SEO is of course going to be affected by it because now we can't simply create millions of pages and expect that to rank. So what are the effects going to be? Yeah, we're going to need better quality stuff. We're going to need probably multimedia on pages. So not just chat GPT created content, but probably also um, images and videos and things like that. I think that's probably where YouTube will continue to shine is that we'll also be able to take videos there and embed them. Also, <clears throat> hang on one sec, water break. Also, what you'll find with like YouTube videos is they will rank on Google. Actually, if anyone wants to do this right now, if you want to hop over to Google, 
type in introduction to marketing and let me know, is my video still ranking for that on Google? Which would be amazing if it is, but like the video is relatively old, it's not very long, but it's still one of the, um, like it's proven to Google that, hey, this is a good video. So now it shows up on search, which is insane. Uh, so yeah, head to Google, type in introduction to marketing. That's it. No Adam Earhart, nothing. Let's just see if that video is down there and let me know. But yeah, I think that's a big thing. We'll, we'll just stay on our, uh, we'll stay on our toes. We'll watch what's happening. Sagar, without previous work, getting first client is way too hard. Is there anything you can suggest? Nope. I'm sorry. Like, no, nope. like it's hard, but that's awesome. That's really good. I like it hard like that. That sounded really awful. I like it to be challenging. And the reason is, is because if it's difficult, other people aren't going to do it, which means that you're going to do it because you're awesome. Right. And other people are going to be lazy. So yeah, it's hard. Oh man. Like my early days, I had to go to these networking events that were 45 minutes out of town and stand up in front of people and talk about things that I was super nervous about. Oh, it was awful. It was terrible. I did it for like years too, way past the point that I had to just because it was so awful and uncomfortable. I was like, surely this must be building some kind of mental fortitude. So yeah, keep doing it. That's it. That's the secret. Jeff. Oh buddy. Good to see you. Pleasure to be here as always. It is so good to see you, man. So good to see you here. Uh, Diana, thank you. What would be a good CPL CPA for this type of gym? How do I know when it's time to turn off the ads? So if their client is worth 400 bucks, a good cost per acquisition, I'd be happy with hundred bucks, 120, 150, maybe even to begin. So if I'm able to get them a client for $150, $100, um, I've just three X their uh, ROI. So that would be good in regards to a good CPL. Oh, it's going to depend. How good's your funnel, right? Like let's work it backwards though. Cost per acquisition. 150 bucks. Okay. Is it a sales call? Are we closing one in four? Because then we'll divide. Oh, we're going to use hundred bucks. So I don't, I don't bugger up the math horribly. hundred bucks cost per acquisition. Are we closing one in four people on a sales call? Okay. That's 25 bucks then for that kind of lead. How many people do we need to fill out an application that actually get on a sales call? Probably half that. So now we're basically double. We have to work it backwards. So from 25, so that means we need 50 people to fill out an application because 25 are going to do a sales call. One in part of me, that worked. 25% are going to do the sales call. One in four is going to convert. You're with me. Map this out. Don't, don't make me do more math, but then we'll work it backwards again. Okay. Well then how many leads do we need? What's the cost, et cetera, et cetera. I map this out all the time. Um, obviously not in my head or I would lose all of the money. Kurt, do you take clients? No, sir. I sadly do not anymore. Um, I did forever. And now I found that I just can't back to the whole time and availability thing. Once in a blue moon, I, if I have a massive company that I love and respect come across my desk and it looks like a super compelling campaign, I will. So in fact, I've taken on one right now and making videos for them and I'm pretty pumped. They're coming out in a week, a few days. It'll be fun. More news on that. Jeff, how do you deal with information overload? I have more than enough info slacking on implementation. Yeah, it's a balance, man. I wish I could tell you that... Um, I wish I could tell you I have it figured out, but the way that my brain works is because I like it so much and I'm so curious about it. Ah, like I, I do struggle. So the way that I do it is I have information time and execution time. That's probably the best advice. So it's like from the hours of 8 AM until noon, I don't consume any information. I just work. That's it. 8 AM till noon. All I do is work. And it's typically writing, recording, something like that all execution, no input. But from the hours of 4 a.m. to 8 a.m., it's kind of all information. I wake up, stupid early, podcasts, audiobooks, books that I want to read, go to the gym, listening to those, making breakfast, listening to those, reading things, eating breakfast, chatting with the kids, looking at articles. Like that's all information time. Again, then noon, noon till one, lunchtime, I'll read a bit. Um, one till five, execution time, no content allowed. Like I'll just read and, and review or part of me, just work and et cetera, et cetera. And then after that, it's, it's free game, uh, family time, et cetera, et cetera. But that's it. Yeah. You got to put bumpers on it. Elon, can you maybe make more videos about launching yourself into working with clients or an SMMA if you're feeling fancy? Yeah, possibly. Possibly. I think it's valuable. I think what I might do instead is more videos around like starting a business because the, um, the concepts are basically identical for what business you want to start. Service-based businesses predominantly. 
on getting clients and sales and things like that. So possibly. Trending news. Hey, how to target different countries with different languages. Do I should create different accounts like to do content marketing? I don't know if you need different accounts. If they're the same business with just different segments, this, the same account should do. If they're like dramatically different businesses, then yeah, different accounts. Um, but but also it, it depends. Like, are we talking different pages? Because then, yeah, you will want a different page to run the ads through so that someone, I don't know if you're targeting French speaking people and they come to an English page, they'll be like, this isn't for me. Now, there's a number of different ways you can do this through one account. You can have translation services on your website with different languages. You can lead people back. You can decide on a primary language. What I would do to start is I would run my one main account. I'd have different pages, let's say Facebook pages for different languages or countries. Then I would run ads in that language to that page, through that page, not to that page, through that page. Yeah, dude. Good to have you back. All right. Let me see. We've got a couple more and then I got a jet for uh, my kid's birthday this weekend. It was one of my son's birthdays yesterday and the other, another one of my son's birthdays is tomorrow. Then my daughter's is in a few months. Then my other son's in a few months after that. Busy place. But yeah, birthday weekend. Namaste retreat. Angus. Angus, hey buddy. From South Africa, how would you go about marketing a new brand? Limited edition sneaker of 200 bucks. Um, I would... What would I do for a sneaker? Limited edition. I would probably run ads. Um, I would target sneakerheads. I would find the most comparable sneaker to what I was selling um, and use that as like my targeting. And then I would use a very similar message and style of my ad. So how do you can do that? Number one, you probably already have a list of your competitors. Go to Facebook, go to their Facebook page, go to, you're going to find this, but like about, then page transparency, then scroll down. It'll say this page is currently running ads or not. If they are, click go to ad library. That'll show you all of the ads that they're running. Do not copy and paste. That is illegal and unethical, um, but rewrite it. Use it for inspiration and tone and style and cadence and structure, and then create your ad with brands, uh, product-based ads, almost like 99 times out of 100, what works best is like picture of the shoe. They click the ad with some kind of great offer, limited edition, 200 left, etc. They click that ad, they go to a landing page, sales page with a picture of the shoe. And then of course, more pictures of the shoe and a video of the shoe rotating on a turntable and reviews about the shoe and like the, instruct the construction and why this is so good, etc., etc. But yeah, I'd probably run Facebook ads or Instagram ads for that one. Um, mostly because I think we could do like the limited edition thing has enough scarcity baked into it that it's a good enough hook. Alexander, good morning. Aditya, I'm starting a career in marketing. One thing I should look out for? Focus, probably. Focus. Find the area of marketing that you find most interesting and double down there. You can make a fortune in any one area. All right. Let me see if I can find one more. We can probably hit two more. Elon, any tips on advertising organic social media? Um, use some structure with hook and build up. Okay, so advertising and organic are two totally different things. So advertising is paying money. Organic is not paying money, for lack of a better term. So if we look at Facebook, we can run a Facebook ad. That's ads. We can create Facebook content and not run ads. That's organic. Um, as far as structure and hook and build up, like... Yeah, use PAS for now by my friend. PAS, problem agitate solve. <laughs> Liao, play the guitar. It's not plugged in. And we ran out of time. Another day. Actually, I haven't played that thing in months, full disclosure. Sad, it's been, been busy. Necromancer, my scary avatar friend. Good to see you. Uh, timeless Amor Photography. What AI tools can be incorporated in our social media ads? Facebook ads, Google ads. Um, Chat GPT for me right now is probably the most valuable one because it's going to allow you to create the ad copy, which is the single biggest factor when it comes to the performance of your ads. So you're much better off to use that to try to help you create and craft a valuable ad. Okay, let me see. I'm going to find one more if I can. Yeah, you know it. We're smashing that like button. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Do, do, do. Jeremy, 
Let's do this one. Oh, hey, hang on. Mel, FBO, fixed pace operation. Oh, it's funny. Hey, that stuff never, never leaves you. Just like I can, I still know the whole, um, what's, I don't even know the name of the alphabet, the alpha, bravo, charlie, delta, echo, foxtrot, golf, hotel, India, all of those. I don't think that'll ever leave my brain. Jeremy, the reason I've not started a business yet is I do not know all the legal things I have to do first. Do I need an EID, a business license, an ILC, articles of incorporation? What do I need? If you are in the United States or Canada, you probably need less than you think, if not nothing at all, um, to start what is called a sole proprietorship. That is what you should probably do. If you like, you can probably find an accountant that you can pay $100 for, for a quick meeting. Sit down with them and be like, I want to start a business. What do I need? They'll tell you exactly what I just did, or you can Google it. But sole proprietorship is basically what you want, provided you're operating it under your own name. Again, depend. You're normally okay. I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. Obviously, check it out, but less than you think to get started. Like they, they make it easy to get started. So let's do that. Google says FBO. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Rob. That's wicked. Okay. And hang on one sec. Did anybody? Oh, okay, good. I wanted to see if that was happening. My video is still on Google. So again, to talk about, to wrap things up here with the future of AI and ChatGPT and, um, and SEO and how all of this marketing is still being affected. At the end of the day, this is going to be like the kind of pithy advice to wrap us all up here. At the end of the day, if you really focus on creating quality content, quality marketing materials that serve the audience that you seek to serve, you're going to do okay. Now, the reason we have these live sessions and that I try to answer as many questions as I can is because there are hacks and tricks and nuances and psychological hot buttons that we can push and things that we can do to further enhance the effectiveness of our, our campaigns. But at the end of the day, it's about really understanding who are the people that I'm trying to serve? What is the best way that I can serve them? What is the best offer that I can make? How can I structure it in a way that makes them feel seen and heard and understood? All of those things apply. Again, final point, just because I know I'll get more questions on it. Um, all available inside here. So with that said, my friends, thank you for being here. It was so good to see all of you. Thank you for the amazing questions. Today was good. I'm, I'm proud of all of you. Those are, those are really, really good questions. And uh, hopefully they helped and will set you off on the right direction for the coming week ahead. Keep me posted. And um, I will see you in the comment section of the upcoming videos. Take care, my friends.